They're preparing to bomb Odessa. Odessa. Russians have always come to Odessa and received a warm welcome. And now what? Bombs falling on Odessa? Artillery against Odessa? Missiles fired at Odessa? It'll be a war crime. It'll be a historical crime. Well, for more, let's speak to our foreign editor, Armin Georgian. Hello, Armin. Um, it, it's an interesting statement from uh, Zelensky there, uh, sort of predicting an assault before it happens. And the port of Odessa is very key to both Ukraine and Russia. Tell us more about it. Yeah, so first of all, uh, he's citing as uh, evidence for this statement uh, documents that have been found on captured Russian soldiers. Uh, I don't know if they would actually carry such things on them. Uh, I suppose it might depend what level in the hierarchy the soldiers actually are, perhaps a senior officer, or if this is somehow based on uh, interrogation of captured troops. Who knows? Uh, to me, it's, it strikes me as rather odd that someone would, would actually carry invasion uh, plans like that on them, uh, given that they could be captured. But anyway, I'm not... Obviously, I don't know the, the, the details of that. Um, certainly, as you say... Uh, will uh, Odessa a very uh, strategic objective, at least on paper, it, it would be something that would uh, no doubt be considered a big prize uh, from the perspective of the of the Russian uh, military, uh, because uh, it would essentially block uh, the Ukrainian side's access to the Black Sea. So just as the uh, assault on Mariupol uh, is an attempt to deny Ukraine access to the Sea of Azov, a similar operation against Odessa would be aimed at, at cutting off uh, a, a, a Ukrainian outlet to the Black Sea and also to block further uh, any kind of supplies moving from the port of uh, Odessa along the road north to Kiev, uh, for example. So uh, if we're looking at a, what we're looking at increasingly is this kind of stranglehold strategy. So as we've been saying for a while, you know, the, this initial tactic of mad, mad dashes with airborne assault troops trying to take over, you know, government quarter in Kiev in the first two days. That obviously has not worked. Instead, uh, Russia has shifted to this different tactic of s slowly, uh, the, the kind of slowly um, encircling uh, cities and also a similar uh, approach to uh, when I talked about Odessa, you know, trying to stop uh, supplies getting around. So a kind of a slow stranglehold, if you will. I think that certainly if that is indeed an objective, it would be consistent with that overall strategy. Yeah, and we heard from uh, Ukrainian President uh, Vladimir Zelensky spoke to the U.S. Congress asking for more assistance. Yeah, that's right. I mean, he's uh, he's keeping the pressure up on the West using some some very harsh, harsh words. But actually, the West has been doing uh, quite a lot in terms of uh, military, existing military aid, uh, e economic and financial aid. But, you know, the West has to think about quite a few things uh, before agreeing to all the things that Zelensky is asking for. Firstly, there's, you know, financial help that is necessary for not just Ukraine, but increasingly Ukraine's neighbors as well. I mean, we saw Antony Blinken in, uh, speaking in Moldova this morning, which has now got a very large refugee population relative to its own small population that is very fragile now uh, and needs economic support, both from the U.S., and uh, the European Union. We've got Poland that is, of course, coming under pressure as well uh, with, uh, you know, more humanitarian needs uh, needed to be covered there. So the U.S. has to think about those kinds of things as well. Uh, and, you know, when it comes to this question of, of aircraft, that's also not, you know, a, a simple matter. Uh, the U.S. is... Of course, still uh, excluding a no-fly zone, and is is insistent that that will not happen. But I suppose the question on many minds is: even help that stops short of that might not avoid a broader escalation between NATO and Russia. Although, of course, Jens Stoltenberg, the NATO boss, in an interview to uh, our colleagues here, said that there were, you know regular conversations with Russia directly aimed at deconfliction. But, of course, one just cannot foresee all possible uh, scenarios in this very kind of dangerous environment, Will. All right. Thank you.